I would like to thank um, Pastor Tony for allowing me to be here this morning. For seeing something in me that I so, forget, so often forget to look for. You see, it is much easier to go with the status quo. And I know to some this may seem out of place. But I am not here by coincidence. I believe I am here by providence. Amen. Am I worthy? No. But He is. Amen. Am I able? No. But God is. Amen. Am I willing? Well, there lies the question. You see, my heart says yes. And that answer was almost immediate after I received an email from Pastor Tony at 8 o'clock on Monday morning on the 20th of June. His question was simple. Would you be available to preach on the 10th of July? Or if that date doesn't work, which one would you be available for? See, he's funny. I was looking for a third option. Yet my heart said, yes, I am willing. Yes, I am available. And then came the mind. My mind said, who do you think you are? Look at you. You are not worthy. You are not able. And even if you are willing, don't you think you will fail? You'll be nervous. You lack biblical foundation. Do you really think anything you have to say will bring revelation? Where will you get your inspiration? Well, how many know that God is not a pond or even a lake? He is a spring of ever-flowing waters, always rising up. In John 4, 14 in the message, it says, the, the water I give will be an artesian spring within gushing fountains of endless life. He does not run dry. He does not run out. His inspiration does not lie dormant. It is always available for those who seek. So am I willing? That is for me to answer. He is worthy. He is able. And if I am willing, He is faithful. Amen. And to prove once again His faithfulness, the moment I said yes, God gave me inspiration. You see, the fear of man is a snare. The fear of man disables. I once heard that preach, as is with no escape plan. The fear of man is a snare, so if you want to avoid the snare, do nothing when you are afraid of man. But what was forgotten was the most important part. Yes, the fear of man is a snare. Yes, it can be debilitating. Yes, it can stop you in your tracks. The fear of man is a snare, no doubt. But what is God's response to that fear, to that snare? In Proverbs 29, 25, it says, The fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord will be exalted. Whereas the message says, The fear of human opinion disables. Trusting in God protects you from that. Amen. For those who trust in Him will rise above. Often we wait. Often I wait. For God to start it, and I will complete it. Maybe we should say yes. Maybe I should say yes. Start it, and let God complete it through me. Maybe I should start playing chopsticks. And let God complete a symphony through me by His Spirit, by His strength, and by His grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank You, Lord, for this day. I thank You, Lord, for this privilege of standing here. I pray, Lord, that I be hidden, hidden behind You, Lord, that You be glorified. You are worthy. You are able. All You ask is that we are willing, and You are faithful. I pray, Lord, the lights will be touched this morning. The lives will be changed this morning, challenged, because no one should leave the same as they enter where they are in the presence of a holy, living God. To you be the glory, to you be the honor. Lord, may, 
my words be your words this morning. May my thoughts be your thoughts this morning. You are able to do exceedingly beyond all my wildest dreams, Lord. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, I would like to continue my series on a cookie this morning. <laughs> Did he just say cookie? Well, this should be interesting. My message this morning is called, What If? What if? What if a cookie didn't smell like a cookie? Years ago, I was visiting a church just outside of Orlando and arrived a few minutes before the start of the service. I was greeted with a handshake and a smile and I felt very welcomed. He then asked me, is this your first time here? And I said, yes. He handed me a welcome package which included church information and a very nice pen. He then asked, well, where are you from? I said, Montreal. He then took back the pen and said, you don't need this. You won't be coming back. <laughs> now hear what I'm saying, church. That is funny, no doubt. But that is also very sad. You see, he held up a cookie in a matter of speaking. But when I got close, it didn't smell like a cookie. There was a foreign aroma that it, instead of drawing me close, pushed me away. No matter what was said that Sunday morning, I couldn't shake the smell. There was a foreign aroma that was lingering in the air. Jeremiah 48, 11 says, Moab has been at ease from his youth. He has settled on his graves. And I had no idea where drapes were. Perhaps I should have, but drapes are solids found at the bottom of liquids that settle. Often when they're making wine, it settles at the bottom. So he has settled on his drapes and has not been emptied from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into captivity. Therefore, his taste remained in him, and his scent, his aroma, has not changed. We are called to be new creations to have a different aroma, a different scent, to be emptied from our old vessel and filled again, and emptied and filled and emptied and filled and emptied and filled again. Amen. If we are never emptied of what we were, our aroma will never change. We have to be filled with what God has for us. It is not enough to look like a cookie if we don't have the aroma that God desires us to have. I know it is a simple way of looking at a church. I know it is simple. But sometimes God uses the simple things in life to confound the wise. So the question is, what if? The question is, what if we smelled like a cookie? See, over 22 years ago, Linda and I were planning on getting married. We had to make a choice of who was going to marry us. I was a practicing Catholic, and Linda was Pentecostal. They didn't need practice. <laughs> we decided to get married in a Pentecostal church and looked into Bethel, as that was the church that Linda went to as a child. Many told us that because I was not a Christian, and we were not attending church together, that no pastor would marry us. The short version of this story is that we met with Pastor Rick Bonvey, and on our first meeting, after being very candid, his words will remain in my heart forever. You see, he looked at the two of us and he simply said, I believe the two of you are meant to be together and I will not stand in God's way. Amen. At that moment, the room was filled with a scent and a sweet, sweet aroma. And although I entered a skeptic, I left changed. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5 2 says, And walk in love, as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us, an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Amen. You see, there is an aroma, something in the air when you encounter someone that is so filled with God's presence that it is almost tangible. In fact, it is. 
You don't even have to be right next to them, and yet you sense something in the air. You sense a sweet, sweet smell. Acts 16, which talks of Paul and Silas who were imprisoned and bound together, chained in a dark, dead prison. Let's read it together. Along about midnight, Paul and Silas were in turn singing a robust hymn to God. The other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. Then, without warning, a huge earthquake. The jailhouse tottered, every door flew open. All the prisoners were free. Startled from his sleep, The jailer saw all the doors swinging loose on their hinges. Assuming that all the prisoners had escaped, he pulled out his sword and was about to do himself in, figuring he was as good as dead anyway. When Paul stopped and said, don't do that. We are all still here. Nobody's run away. The jailer brought a torch right inside, fatty shaking and collapsed in front of Paul and Silas. He led them out of the jail and asked, Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved, to really live? They said, put your entire trust in the Master Jesus. Then you'll live as you're meant to live, and everyone in your household included. We're all still here. Nobody's run away. Nobody's run away. Imagine the scent of a dark, dirty, rat-infested, putrid prison. Who would want to remain there, let alone be singing praises to God? Paul and Silas took the smell of death and replaced it with an overwhelming smell of life. If the prison wouldn't go to the bakery, so to speak, well then the bakery would go to the prison. There was such a sweet smell that no one, not even those who de deserved to be there and who longed to get out, wanted to leave. You tell me why no one escaped. You see, Paul and Silas, they're kind of easier to explain, but why didn't the guilty prisoners flee? Nobody's run away. We're all still here. Why? I would contend because there was something that drew them close. We are called to be that aroma. Amen? Amen. Psalm 51 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a steadfast, willing spirit within me. Why does God create a clean heart in us? And why did David ask that? Was it so that he could stand up and boast of all that God had done for him? And look at my clean heart. When we cry out to God and ask the same, what is the purpose for God granting that request? Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a steadfast, willing spirit within me. Whereas the message says, God, make a fresh start in me. God, make a fresh start in me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey. Amen. Then what? Why do the work in me, God? Is it for us to boast? Is it for me to boast? Or is there a higher purpose? What is the higher purpose? I believe the higher purpose is found in the next verse. It says, then, I will teach rebels your ways, and they will return to you. Amen. Whereas the message says, so that the lost can find their way home. Amen. So that the lost can find Amen. their way home. When Paul and Silas gave praise to, their, to God, their heart was clean. Their spirit right, their fragrance gods. And the result that even though the prison doors were open and all the prisoners free to go, no one left. And lives were changed, and the rebellious, the lost, the prisoner, found their way home. Amen. They were drawn to God Amen. so that the lost 
to find their way home. In closing, Paul and Silas were living what David wrote in Psalm 51, to which Paul would have been extremely well versed in. Paul took the words of Psalm 51 and made them part of his life. Soak me in your laundry and I'll come out clean. Scrub me and I'll have snow white light. Tune me in foot tapping song and set these once broken bones to dancing. Amen. Don't look too close for blemishes. Give me a clean bill of health. God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. Amen. Do you think that Paul was having a chaotic life? Do you think he needed a fresh start? Did you think his circumstances needed to be changed? God, make a fresh start in me. Shape the Genesis week from the chaos of my life. Don't throw me out with the trap, trash. Bring me back from gray exile. Praise the Lord. Or fail to breathe holiness in me. Amen, amen. Or fail to breathe holiness in me. Put a fresh wind in my sails. God, give me a job teaching rebels your ways so that the lost can find their way home. Amen. Let us be that scent that draws people from where they are to where God intends them to be so that the lost, the wounded, the hurting, the proud, the rich, the poor, the strong, the weak, the young, and the old can find their way home. Amen. I will close with this. It's a little paraphrase. It says, and walk in love, Ephesians 5, 2, once again. And walk in love, love that is not cautious, but extravagant. Love that is not cautious, but extravagant. Jesus didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Love that is not cautious, but extravagant. Amen. Be that sweet smelling aroma, church. Be that sweet smelling aroma. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.